Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork out for a while. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. You are about to listen to the Dork Forest. Let's give you the info about it. First of all, you know the websites. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. All of my podcasts, including uh, videos of my stand-up, my stand-up schedule, merchandise you can purchase if you would like, and a lot more info than you possibly even need. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg sang and produced and composed that song at the beginning of the show. He sang with his wife, Sarah. It's very beautiful. At the end of the program, he sings his version of the Mexican hat dance. That's Mike Rickberg. Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He is uh, the web designer over there. And Patrick Brady fixes the audio. And in this case, there's a video intro. Very exciting. Anyway, those are the websites. If you want to support the show, you're doing it already by listening to it or watching it. And another way is to tell your friends and family, go on iTunes, do a review. Another way is to just give me money. Yeah. You could go use the donate button. You can make it even monthly if you're okay with making things monthly. You do a PayPal monthly. There's a monthly choice on PayPal. The PayPal is a button on the Jackie Cation or the Dork Forest website, and it goes directly to me. Thank you very much. I will use it wisely or foolishly. Your call as well. Now, my email address, Jackie at JackieCation.com, is where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns and about the Dork Forest. And I do have a Venmo account. It's Jackie hyphen Cation, oddly enough. Another way to support the show is on DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. There's an Amazon link. And the Amazon link just takes you to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show because you came from Jackie Cation or DorkForest.com. Very exciting. Other than that, oh, there are there is a band camp. You can if you have listened to all the episodes that are free and you need more content, there are several live episodes that are at thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost me a couple of bucks, so I charge a couple of bucks. There's also a storytelling album there that you can listen to some stories that I did live. And there are 17 free episodes before the Dork Forest was pre-recorded. So the audio isn't very good, but the guests were super funny and fun and dorky. So if you want to do that, go to the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Other than that, let's see if there are other things that I should be talking about. Possibly uh, the merch. Yeah, if you want to buy merch. The only other thing I want to talk about is the merch. You can get Dork Forest t-shirts. Uh, and you can get stand-up comedy t-shirts. You can get my albums or my DVD over at JackieCation.com slash merch. There's pins, there's a challenge coin, there's a bunch of new things happening over there. Anyway, a lot of information. I think, I don't think I've missed anything, but who cares? Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I am in my living room. No, I'm not. I'm in, why do I keep saying that? Because I usually record my living room with the guest in the living room with me. Mm-hmm. But that isn't happening because we're living in a dumpster fire. So uh, we are over the internet with Lisa Curry, ladies and gentlemen, at Lisa underscore Curry, C-U-R-R-Y, uh, is stand-up comic, uh, hilarious, uh, beautiful person to tweet, uh, tweet follow, and it's at Lisa underscore Curry. And you have a new album called Alive for a While. I do. Which is, of course, yeah. also accurate. And then <laughs> yeah. on your Instagram, hilariously, you are at Olympian Lisa Curry. Please tell, just just tell the story. Why? <laughs> uh, there's an Olympic gold medalist named Lisa Curry, and she took our name, so I took Olympian. Hi. <laughs> See, that is the greatest tiny story in the whole wide world. Okay. <laughs> so um, here's what I have to say now is we're going to be talking boats and I'm very excited about it because I, I too love boats, but I don't know. Yes. Anything. I'm just enthusiastic about boats. I don't know anything about boats. I love Wh- that. Where, what do you know about boats? Why do you know about so boats? So much. Okay, so when I was a kid, my parents owned a marina for a little while. They bought Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was like seven, my parents bought a marina and uh, 
because we had it, they, they would host boating classes at the marina. And when I was nine, they signed me up because they're like, well, you got to, we have 10 acres here. One day you will. Child labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, we, you, you must be trained. We, you need to be an asset around here. <laughs> and it's funny because the class was like all adults and then me and I aced it and I got my boating license. And then it was like, maybe like 10 months later or something, the state of Indiana was like, what the fuck? A nine-year-old got their license. And so they changed the law afterwards that you had to be 16 and have a driver's license to drive a boat, like a speed boat. Right, right. But I was grandfathered in, so I was just like driving right. boats. So for, for driving boats, like 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 Sandy in Flipper. Hi, yeah. I have a, a very old reference to a television program from the 60s. I am 100 years old. But here's, so this is real boat talk. Your parents yeah. in Indiana, mm-hmm. like on Lake, which one's in? Uh, Cedar Lake is the name oh. of the town and the lake. There you go. Small. Like an hour out of Chicago. Okay. Oh, you're in you're in that beard western Indiana. Yeah. Uh, Cedar Lake. And so you're on essentially just a lake, just a freshwater mm-hmm. lake in Indiana. You guys have a marina, which is how many acres? Ten acres. It was ten acres or is. And uh and so they're like, your parents loved boats. They're like, we're doing it. We're getting into the boat business. <laughs> yeah. Did you rent boats? Did you? We, we rented them out. So we had like a pontoon and like a ski boat and a fishing oh. boat. And we had, what's funny. So I learned to drive a boat when I was nine. And my little brother was like, not five at the time. He's five years. He's like about five years younger than me. And we also had a work boat, which was just like a big pontoon. It was like it kind of looked like a barge, but it had like a big crank on it. So you could pull boats out of the water that it had. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So it yeah. was a, it was a helper boat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my parents taught my little brother to drive that. So he would just like be out on the lake, like helping my dad <laughs> take boats. <laughs> This is the greatest life. I it swallows and Amazons. It's flipper. Oh my god! Except for inland boat talk. So it was. Well, the lake is big enough to do water skiing on. Yeah. Oh yeah. I did a lot of water skiing actually when I was a kid. So we grew up. the The marina was on one end of the lake, and I grew up on the other end of the lake. This is a whole other thing. My family owns like a small, they call it a resort, but it's like a couple of houses they rent out and there used to be cottages. Uh, there's a bar. It's on the lake. And of course uh, there's a bar. Hello and welcome <laughs> there's, to Indiana. There's always <laughs> a bar. So, uh, what, what the fuck was I going to say? Something you were saying how big it was. And, and Oh yeah. yeah. So we would water ski. So it, on our property where, I, where our house was, we had a big pier that went out into the lake. And when I was really little, like, you know, four years old, five years old, my dad would sit on the end of the pier and have me on his shoulders and then take off water skiing from there. So I would like water skiing when I was little on my dad's shoulders. Oh my God. I kind of want that picture to be the picture for the (laughs) slug. Uh, Oh my God. That is, I've never been water skiing. One time I was towed by like one of those inner tubes behind a boat. Oh, yeah. But the only um, water ski, like I lived on Lake Michigan. And oh, okay. one of my, uh, my Uncle Carrie, who was actually our cousin, uh, he f- for a couple of years was big into boating. And so he had like a speed boat and f- that we went out on Lake Michigan one time. And then, um, but that was the only time. Yeah. Is it hard? Is it hard to water ski? It's fucking hard. It is. It, was, it felt easy when I was a kid. Because um, you're all bendy and shit. Yeah. And then you get older and you're like, I, I went a couple of years ago off my brother's boat and I was like, this is fucking exhausting because you have to like brace your whole body and like you're being jerked out of the water by the boat and you have to like really yeah. hang on and keep yourself. Yeah. But then once you're up, it's not that hard. You know? you, that, it, then it's just balance. Then it's just balance, right? Yeah. Well, it barely because the boat's pulling you. So you just have to like hold on really. Right. And to me, it feels safer than tubing. Like I'm scared as fuck of tubing because my, you know, my brothers would drive the boat and they like try to whip you around and uh, skiing, you would just let go right. and you sink down where with tubing, it's like, if you jump off the tube, you, you like if you let go of a, a like a ski rope, it's a slow yeah. descent into the water. And if you yeah. jump off of a tube, you're hitting the water at thirty miles an hour. <laughs> right, you are a skipping sc- stone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, wow. Okay. How about how about okay? I should probably wait to ask, but I need to know. Do you know how to sail? 
I do. Oh, Jackie, you're going to love this. Okay. (laughs) So, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, sail growing up. We didn't have sailboats. My parents didn't mess with them. Um, Right. And when I moved to LA, I like was dying to learn how to sail. And I thought I can't afford sailing classes. So I found on Meetup, I found a sailing club and I thought I'll just sign up. Cause I know, I'm like, I know with sailing, you need people to crew. So I'm like, I'll just fucking learn when I get there, whatever. Right. So (laughs) I sign up for this, uh, the women's sailing association of, I think it was uh, Marina Del Rey or something, Okay. something like this is like a decade ago. Mm -hmm. So I sign up. I'm so involved, Jackie. I'm going to weekly meetings about, and and all the meetings are like, oh, they've raised the prices on boat slips. And I'm like waiting tables. And I'm like, ah, yeah. (laughs) 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 Oh no, (laughs) I'm so sorry. Your, your boat that you own has boat slip prices. Anyway, go ahead. (laughs) So I'm, I'm in the sailing club for a year. I just start going to all these meetings. I learn, I just start signing up to crew and uh, I learn while I'm there. And like, I was so involved. I did the fucking boat parade. Uh, We decorated a boat for the boat parade. We won, thank you very much. And then like, (laughs) like 10 months in, Jackie, I'm at one of the meetings and I'm sitting at this, table we're all like eating and this woman comes over and like straddles my leg and starts patting my thigh and I was like wait a second what is happening and I look up and I look around and I'm like this is a lesbian boat club (laughs) oh you didn't notice I didn't realize for a fucking year (laughs) because you were boat crazy you were girl (laughs) crazy (laughs) and I'm like oh it's all I'm like I'm the only woman under 40 here which is fine um and, you're and the I'm only like, not lesbian which is I fine know. <laughs> I, know. I was like everything just started adding up suddenly i was like oh women but, only sometimes mean lesbian and that's fine I didn't, that's fine I, but i was just like oh i think that they think i'm something else <laughs> well and you and it, it just proves that your gaydar is terrible i have <laughs> i have i have one of the worst gaydars in the whole wide world uh for about a year and a half i thought i might be gay and then i <laughs> went out gave it because sh- other people literally would come up and say you're probably gay and so eventually when i was drunk one time i was like well maybe i'm gay and so <laughs> i went out and i made out with a lady and i was like nope that wasn't what i was looking for and uh i mean it was fine make out drunk sure. wise but uh but it wasn't in an ideal world but and then one time though but See this, I've been hanging out with all kinds of people forever, obviously, because I am human. But one of my roommates from college, who became my roommate after college, we got her an apartment together. She had a roommate. She added a third person to our to our roommate situation. And she wasn't out. Uh, a year later, uh, the third person moved out. And she was like, oh, I should probably tell you, that was my girlfriend. And I am gay. Oh. And I was like, well... I thought that you guys just didn't liked each other better than you liked me. I thought we were our my, our <laughs> friendship was in jeopardy, and uh, she was like, "Nope, nope. I'm just that was I really liked her a lot." And it, anyway, so but and, but uh, that is hilarious that uh, so but so you did crew, and that's anyway, how so you yeah. learned how to sail. Yeah. So that in look, it's only ninety dollars. I I would join again if I had yeah. time, but it's it's ninety bucks a year. It's and you just sign up. People send out emails and they're like, I'm going out Saturday. Who wants to come? Okay. Um, it's great. That's amazing. I would, I would, I would, yeah, I might do that. We went yeah. to Marina Del Rey yesterday. I saw that. Um, I love it. Just to go look at boats. And we saw people with sailboats. And then we saw um, a lot of people, brunch Covidians out uh, in, in outdoor, you know, restaurants, which is fine. But I want everyone more masks, more plexiglass. I don't know yeah, what I want from people, I like but people I would be more cautious. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> I just I don't know why. Uh, because I know we're all I know why because of science. Anyway, so <laughs> but I'm I'm bored. I'm bored, and I too want to go out to lunch, and I want a waiter to come by and refill my coffee cup one hundred times. Absolutely. So I, <laughs> I, but it is so beautiful. But being so, you were you learned to sail on the ocean, on the Pacific yeah. Ocean. Yeah. Uh, which is it's sailing to me is fucking terrifying because when you're when you're go like when the boat is healing that so it's like up on the side it feels like it's gonna tip over and it 
it could in some circumstances, but more often than not, it's not going to, but it feel, like it makes my heart race where I'm like, the sail is six inches off of the, the water. What the fuck right. do you mean it's okay? <laughs> you know, where right. I'm like, if, if I had a speedboat up like that, it, it would mean we're in danger. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. That's so interesting. So when you crew, are you just essentially learning where to put the ropes, how to get out of the way of the boom? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of that, which I don't love. It's not relaxing because then you're like jumping back and forth and you have to. It's pers- work. It's, it's a job, yeah, right? It's a lot of work because, you know, like the whoever the boat captain is, is just steering and you're managing the sails and they're shouting at you and you're like, ah, like pulling the ropes and everything. And I'm not, I'm also like, since I grew up on a lake, I didn't grow up on like a big, and it was a smaller lake. It's like a little bit smaller than Big Bear Lake. If you've been up there, I don't know how many acres. I have not, I actually haven't been, but, um, Um, but it's like, it's like a a place where Boy Scout and Girl Scout camp, that kind of lake, like you can see across it, right? You could see across it. You I could, mean, it's plenty big yeah. for, I mean, you could still water yeah. ski and stuff, but right. sort of like Pyramid Lake, uh, which is totally. up off the, yeah. You okay. just could we didn't have like big gusts of wind. So there wasn't like, I mean, you have to take the wind into account when you're driving a boat anyway, but not in the way you do with sailing. So I right. never really, I don't, I don't have that like instinct in my bones with the wind where I do with like every a other motor. aspect of boating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose. And so, so the, how big were these sailboats? I mean, was it a bigger crew? Like, is it a two person? Was it just two Maybe or three like people? A 20 foot sailboat. Yeah. Just like two or three people could sail um, it pretty easily. Yeah. Two or three people. Yeah. Was, was it, uh, did you get to a point where you could enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I enjoy being on the water regardless, but I, uh, on any type of boat, um, but I'd prefer a speedboat or even a canoe, just something that feels like I have a little bit more control and the wind isn't going to whip me into the water. I, I also like, if you go down to the marina, in the marina, they have the UCLA uh, Marine Aquatic Center and they have and I don't know what they're doing during COVID, but they have a lot of the collegiate teams they have, they offer signups for non-collegiate teams just for you to, and it's cheaper than anywhere else because it's, you know. Oh, it's owned by the school, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see them doing capsizing exercises. And I'm like, that is, I mean, when I was a kid, I would like try to flip over a boat because I like didn't fear death and I thought it was funny. Um, And I never succeeded at flipping over a boat, but I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I would do if I capsized. I think I would, I, I probably should take that class because I'm terrified of it. Right. Well, yeah, because it seems like that is something, but I think you would be really good at it because you have all this experience and you probably. would, yeah, you probably wouldn't. The one time I was out on the Atlantic Ocean on a catamaran mm-hmm. um, with, a, with a guy that I worked at with at the hot dog stand that I worked at glamorous job uh <laughs> foot long dogs you guys anyway uh so we flip we we tipped over the catamaran oh, shit. and yeah and so he was like okay so we both climb up on this one side mm-hmm. and then we grab onto the ropes and you lean back and then it just pops it back up oh, good. well except that i grabbed a bungee cord <laughs> no <Jeff. laughs> And I, it was like a it was like a cartoon where I just fell back and he could not stop laughing. This young, this uh, I say young man. We were both uh, of an age. Uh, he was a very handsome guy, dumb as a box of rocks. This guy, but he could sail like the wind. He was actually really good at uh, several things, but he was not an interesting conversationalist. So uh, it was worst. it was kind of fun to go sailing with him because there's uh, it's the wind is loud. Lisa Curry, yeah. the wind is loud. Yeah, it's not, I think a lot of people think of sailing, they think of it in the same place in their brain as like yachting and they're like, ooh, I'm going to be in like a hot bikini and like high heel sandals or whatever the fuck. And they're in like, a music no. video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, this is very utilitarian. You you need to know the rules. You could get a tooth knocked out. You could get your head cut off. <laughs> have you ever been on a yacht? Have you I ever have been not- on like... A crew, like a sort of a cruising sailboat or any of the, have you ever gone on like a three day, three hour tour? I've done several three hour tours. I've done deep sea fishing, but I haven't. Um, yeah. Oh, you have. <laughs> I have. Yeah. Do it's, you fish? I, well, I grew up fishing, so I, I will do it. Um, right. It's definitely more exciting uh, out on the open ocean than in a little lake or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, so you were, were you in the Keys or something? 
I think where where were you? Key West? Or? Was, I'm not sure where that was. I was it was ages ago. I was out with my mom and my brother. Oh, okay. I think like off of Tampa somewhere. So probably in the Gulf. Okay. And then so and you used a speedboat to go deep sea fishing yeah. essentially. Yeah. Wow. And I See, caught some weird looking thing that I can't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and you sent it back? Did you yeah, send it oh, home? Absolutely. To yeah. to tell the tale at the yeah. at the at, at the at the <laughs> fish know. bar. I'm like one uh, of your friends. <laughs> Larry Miller used to do a joke about how uh catch and release was it just felt cruel because it felt like uh, aliens. Somebody you telling him it's oh, like yeah. <laughs> like they, they were sitting at the bar going, You don't understand. I was in the boat. Anyway. So. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it is funny. It's one of the best. It was the best catch and release joke I had ever heard, and I used to have one. So uh, the uh, but the so when when you did that, is it the thing about fish? The thing about sailing and boating and all this stuff. It's uh, do you usually do you spend a day or do you just spend a half a day? God, as much time as possible. I mean, if I only have thirty minutes to go out, I'll go. But I went. I was in Big Bear this weekend with oh, a couple were you? Of people. Uh, yeah, with some friends. I don't know if you know Rick Wood. He's a comic. He's I know a his name. Yeah. Uh, Brandy Posey, you know. Um, oh, did you guys, did you go to Yosemite? She was they in went Yosemite. To, the two of them went to Yosemite afterwards. Okay. So okay. we all got, we all got COVID tests last week. And when they came back negative, we booked a cabin. It was the, us three and my friend Megan, and we all went up and we went on a boat on Big Bear, a pontoon. And it was so fun like they only let us rent it for four hours and then after four hours i called i was like please 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 and they're like okay fine you can stay for two more hours <laughs> but i'm like i use pontoon to- boats are so great because they're so easy yeah. to drive so easy and you could just it's just like it's sort of it's just like renting a car except for then you just sit on the boat yeah like like it's all automatic right you don't have to yeah. there's nothing fancy everything's, to it everything's automatic it's like the hardest kind of boat to destroy trust i have destroyed <laughs> boats before <laughs> <laughs> but like a pontoon it's Im- impossible to destroy uh just because it's know, like so a, flat it's just it it doesn't tip well yeah it's super even if sturdy even if you're like crashing back into the pier you you have the big aluminum pontoons that would hit the pier where like if you're in a speedboat, what's going to hit the pier is the fiberglass side of the speedboat. And, you know, sometimes you might slice it open if you're 10 years old and you don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> and then blame it on someone who rented it. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this. Oh, here. Uh, I, I, too, wish to talk about boats. Here we go. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I had a really shitty job, I've had many shitty jobs, but mm-hmm. one summer I, I worked in the Wisconsin Dells, which mm-hmm. is essentially sort of, uh, I don't even know what, it's got water parks, it's, right. but there are very, there's beautiful, um, there's beautiful nature there as well, the Dells. Yeah. And there are Upper Dells tours and Lower Dells tours, and they are Wisconsin River boat tours. And they're just mm-hmm. sort of big boats, paddle boats usually. And they're dumb, but they're very pretty. And uh, But there are these giant water boats. There's a place called Family Land, and then there was a oh. hilariously named Noah's Ark. Anyway, which <laughs> was course. very funny. In Wisconsin, of course. <laughs> uh, gutsy stuff. Anyway, so, but at Noah's Ark or Family Land, I can't remember which, they had it was a go-kart track for tiny speedboats get out jackie i would die guess how long (laughs) that lasted one summer trash the boats everybody because you know how people do with go-karts yeah it was it was so fun it was it was like bumper boats but not it should have been because bumper boats are pretty fun but tiny tiny little tiny speed boats that first of all are adorable seat one to two people you get in it and you and it was oh it was an error on their part it must it must have cost them a hundred grand for this thing but it went away (laughs) immediately oh that's so funny do you so do your parents still have the lake and stuff do, the... no my parents live in florida now they're um retired and sort of they're half retired they're nuts okay <laughs> um but they we actually uh, unfortunately we lost the marina after a while it was like a whole big thing where my parents were buying it on contract and then tried to sell it before their contract was over and it was a big mess but we did have it for a, a good amount of time I, and my brother's still boat um, okay boats yeah, yeah. It's uh, one of my cousins, my cousin Johnny, whose son Jimmy has the dream job doing a joke about him these days. Anyway, <laughs> but my cousin Johnny, 
he owned half of one of those Boy Scout Girl Scout lakes uh, in Wisconsin. And we would go up there to have, and he had like this big lodge that he would huh? rent out, you know, that had, you know, like 13 rooms in it with bunk beds that, that would fill, like you could have 40 people. And, um, and then he, there was a Boy Scout camp across the way and he would have like the church camp would go to that, to that, uh, to, to that lake and stuff. And mm-hmm. we would go there sometimes. And one time they had uh, a little sunfisher. Uh, you know those, it's a tiny, it's a one person sort of mm-hmm. idiot sailboat. Right. Uh, it's a starter. It, they sometimes do races with them cause they're kind of super simple. And that's the one that I always wanted to learn on, but I don't want to learn how to, to fly, to, to fly, to sail a, <laughs> a, a little sunfisher on the Pacific ocean. No, that no, seems no, no. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what kind of, uh, so there's canoes. There's the oh, pontoon yeah. boats. So did you yeah. do a fair amount of canoeing too? A lot of canoeing. Because we had a canoe, even after we got, we lost the marina, we had a canoe just in our yard. And they're so simple, you know? Yeah. You just like pull it up onto shore and just leave it there. Um, that right. Canoeing is so fun to me. I I love it. What do you, because it, it's, well, especially if you're going downriver. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you, because <laughs> yeah. they're easy to steer. Yeah. Um, do you like canoeing better than kayaking? I do. I, you know, the thing I don't like about kayaking is I, I feel like I, uh, well, I've only kayaked out here. So I went in Big Bear this weekend. I took my dog who fell in the water a couple of times. <laughs> but, can you, know, you you're swim? In a kayak and you, oh yeah, she can swim. Okay, She's good. good. Uh, but with a kayak, your ass is wet and it's just like, it, you're kind of like, sort of partially in the water i'm not as into it i like a i like a canoe better because you could like you know maybe you can move around a little bit you can move around it feels more relaxing to me because it doesn't feel as urgent i guess you know it yeah it really does it kind of feels like you're sitting in your own wet in a yeah. in, in a kayak but some people yeah. like it because it moves a little it's a little more maneuverable and a little yeah. fast i mean those are those are people who like a speed thing yeah. uh, can, canoe like the the canoeing I've done, some of my favorite canoeing, the first time I went canoeing, I must have been in Minneapolis on, well, I went tubing once on the Apple River, which is just uh-huh. sitting in other people's pee while you drink beer. <laughs> and, uh, but the, uh, but there's a, the St. Croix River, which is uh, sort of not as big as the Mississippi, but it's a big river. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they have canoeing and you rent a canoe for 20 bucks oh, wow. and then you canoe down the St. Croix and then they pick you up and they drive you, they drive you back to your oh, car. Nice. They pick up you and your canoe for tw- and you for 20 bucks. Oh, wow. That's a great deal. I've never been on a river. I think a river. River canoeing, super Rivers, fun. Yeah. Yeah, super fun. And you bring a, you know, at the time it was, we brought a lot of fruit. We brought a lot yeah. of beer. We brought a lot of weed. And <laughs> uh, and then we brought some sandwiches. And then we sort of floated and swam and canoed. And oh, so that you mostly. Like paradise. Yeah, it was kind of paradise. So you mostly have canoed on lakes. Yeah. I think yeah. probably entirely. Yeah. I, okay. I love it. Oh, you would. Yeah, you would love that canoe down a, down a, we went to Kern County, Andy oh. and I. Where there are rapids that you can canoe down, and Wait, on Kern County, as in like whatever Fresno, Los Angeles, yeah. yeah, yeah, Los yeah. Angeles. It's gorgeous up there. We went for my birthday last year, oh. and um, we did not uh, canoe because uh, it rained a lot last year, and so the rapids were super fast, and oh, uh, it was a little too scary. I was like, mm, I kind of wanna, but I, I, I don't wanna. I don't want to be tipped yeah, into it. Gra- it was you can drown, <laughs> right? Right. I'm not much of a rapids kind of like. Yeah. I like a water park. Uh, yeah. I like. <laughs> I do like water. Uh, so, but they I like something where I can control the level of danger. I'm in. Okay. You know, like. Have you I ever like been parasailing? Parasail. I have. I've been parasailing. Actually, I was parasailing a handful of years ago out. Um, I think in Marina Del Rey or somewhere out here. Yeah, they have it um, out there. Yeah, which is, it's fine. It feels too um, relaxing to me. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that exciting. Oh, because you just get pulled up into the sky? Yeah. What, what is it like? I've, I've only there. seen it. 
it's kind of, it's it feels a little bit boring. You just, you know, you get pulled up into the air and then you're just up there for a little while and you don't really see anything. Because you're just you know? flying, you're being flown like a kite, right? Yeah, exactly. And you just ha have like, a, you're there with a friend usually and you have like a half boring conversation and then they pull you <laughs> <up>. <laughs> are they Are you up there for like 15 minutes and it costs yeah, $300? Like 15, yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. It's obscene. <laughs> okay. Because in Kern County, we, we, so we did not canoe. Uh, so we decided to rent a jet ski. We were going to each, I had never been on a jet ski and I thought, I want to figure out what that's like. So we rented uh -huh. one jet ski and, and they were, they were like, you've never been on a jet ski. You got to stay within view of the, of, uh -huh. of the thing. And, uh, d don't speak, you know, you can't, don't, uh, skid around and get in the wake and this type of thing. That's the and only, so, that's the best part of jet skiing though. Yeah. It was that's really dumb. Thing. It was really boring. <laughs> uh, so, um, we did it. We literally rented it for an hour. We we uh -huh. uh, we did it together for a half an hour. He went out again uh, by himself for fifteen minutes. He came back and then we gave it to them back fifteen yeah. minutes early. It's not. It's jet skiing is also. It's not as fun with somebody else on the jet ski because then you can't you can't really go crazy. You know, you want to jump on the waves and stuff. Yeah. A passenger doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> right. They want to. They want to sort of be in control too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, I, I mean, if we'd each had a jet ski, what we really wanted to do was sort of, you know, explore the edges of the lake. It wasn't mm -hmm. a very big lake up in Kern. It was Kern Lake. Oh, yeah. Um, it would have been fun to kind of do some exploring and stuff, uh, but we had to stay within sight of where we had rented the jet. I mean, of the whole course, thing. Yeah. That sounds I was like, so lame. I could have lit $120 on fire. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No kidding. Uh, but okay, I like the yeah. idea. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Yeah, maybe try just it by myself. Lake. Maybe go to Tahoe or something more, you know, where they allow it. The yeah. one thing also with Big Bear is you're not allowed to swim in the lake, which is weird. I don't know why. Um, I'm not, it's unclear. That is. <laughs> why? But Does I, it look you know, clear? Does it look like a clean lake? It look, Yeah, it looks like any natural lake where it's kind of greenish and there's yeah. like, you know, algae in different spots. Um but I yeah, get not drinking it, it, but, uh, but yeah, because yeah. I mean, what you want to do is you want to go swimming and you want to swim out to that weird, did you guys, when you were a kid, have one of those weird platforms that you could swim out to and we dive didn't. off of? We didn't. I know what you're talking about, but our, our lake was too small for one of those. Fair enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, okay. So we got canoes. We got, uh, you got your rowboat that, 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 that's a labor intensive, yeah. uh, yeah. Um, but it's canoe okay. It's yeah, fun. it's it's canoe adjacent. It's not as fun as a canoe. The no. rowboat. Uh, we got your kayaks. We've discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. you got your sailboats. Uh, and then now let's get into speedboats. They're oh, small. Yeah. There's Oof. bigger. How many speedboats have you? What kind of speedboat experiences have you? Oh have? God, so so many. We had a family friend who docked his boat at our marina. God bless him. He was like, "Yeah, take the boat out whenever you want." And me being a kid, I was like, "Yeah, no problem." Got All it. the t now. I'll, yeah, I will. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like, this is one I like. Per I tried to flip over because I heard you could flip them over, and I'm like, that would be fun because I'm 11. Uh, <laughs> And they're those little, it looks like something between a, a ski boat and a jet ski, these little sea doos. And it's like, uh, usually like a four seater situation and they're really low and they're really compact. And you can do a 360 where it just like spins completely. Oh, around. wow. And so I would do just that donuts? and try to flip it over. Yeah. And I would get, you know, water coming into the boat, but I never quite got it over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> um <laughs> That's a, it's called a, I, I, a ski do. I think ski do makes ski -Doo. jets, sea do. Oh, right. Cause yeah, ski do's I mean, yeah, are the jet brand. skis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's other brands of them too, but, um, I, sea do is the one that we have. Have you, have stuff. you ever driven one of those, the ones that look like a puffy boat there? I think they're Zodiacs or something. They're spe they're, they're, they look like they're inflatable speed boats. Like the oh, Coast Guard has talking them. about. Yeah. yeah, no, I haven't been on one of those. That's maybe like one of the only boats I've never been on. Well, because that yeah. would be that because those look uh, like you could compact them and shove them in your trunk, but you can't. Yeah, that's not that's <laughs> yeah. not real. And uh, <laughs> so, what uh, what other kind have you? What's the biggest one you've done? Oh, the biggest one. I was on. 
fuck. I don't remember. I, years ago, when I was in high school, I took a uh, marine biology class. And so we went down to Key West or Key Largo. I'm sorry. We went to Key Largo and we like dove a bunch of shipwrecks and stuff. But then we took a big boat out, some kind of giant, Just, massive yeah. thing. And uh, I pestered them until they let me drive back. <laughs> You're like, I had my license when I was nine. I know. Get away and from they're me. like, okay, weirdo. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so you also dive. Yeah, you, okay. I love it. It's it's too expensive of a hobby for me to do, um, you know, regularly. But but you can do I it. it so, can. Do you own your own stuff, or do you? I do. I have like a, a wetsuit and flippers and like a mask and stuff. I don't have like yeah. the, tank, the tank and all that set up. But that's a step. Yeah. I I went. Uh, I I went. Uh, uh, it was essentially idiot uh, diving. Uh, it's called sea diving. What's it called? Why am I snorkeling? I went snorkeling, but what's the kind <laughs> with the tank on your back? Which I've completely, oh, that's, that's scuba diving. Yeah. Scuba diving. The word yeah. scuba, for some reason, <laughs> escaped me. Hi, Rangers. Uh, by the way, I'm talking with Lisa Curry. You guys might want to look uh, Lisa underscore Curry <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, she has a new album called out Alive for a While that she recorded in London, England. Very yeah, glamorous. And uh, and it's at Olympian Lisa Curry on instagram which is hilarious to me anyway so um no i so i've been to the uh uh wow okay uh the great barrier reef a couple of times in australia yeah incredible yeah so the first time i went it was just snorkeling and we took we took a catamaran like a touring catamaran catamaran Mm -hmm. like there were 10 of us on this thing out to the Great Barrier Reef and we could snorkel and swim and stuff. And uh, and one of the other comics, hilariously, this young guy named, at the time, uh, Damo, Damien Green. Damien Green, mm-hmm. I think it was. Uh, he was like, hey, I heard there's a shark over there. And he started swimming towards it. And I was like, what are you? You're out of your goddamn mind. Anyway, so, uh, the, uh, but the, the next time I went, I went with Andy. We went to uh, Sydney for a, uh, a wedding. And so we took a couple of weekends and went up to the Whit Sundays, which is the southernmost part of the Great Barrier Reef. And we took a sailboat out. And they had, you could do idiot scuba diving, where you didn't have to take a class or anything. Oh, shit. They just took you down for like 40 minutes and the guy watched everybody super close uh-huh. and he held on to one person and he held on to me. I was not flattered. <laughs> I was not flattered. <laughs> Jackie, I would be so mad. I'd be like, ew, get away from me. <laughs> I know, right? Everybody else got to go wander <laughs> around and look at fish. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. That's so scary. I can't like, after, I mean, because I'm certified to scuba dive and I had to take all these intense classes and you have to take all these tests and knowing how precarious your everything is once you're down there it, it scares the shit out of me that you could go down there with no training because you you can die you yeah can die. <laughs> and there were and there were That's like an six option. there were six of us Come that on. he had to, that he had to keep an eye on no. and i was the only one that he was right next to so i mean none of us died we all went yeah. up but uh and it was um... god that would have been a great bit i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> And then the one guy died. <laughs> and then the what? Yeah, exactly. We lost someone down there uh, to one of those fishes that had just a light bulb on the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, so you're definitely water people. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So you've done you've done a lot of the but but I just I think about how much times you've been on the oceans, right? Like Pacific mm-hmm. and Atlantic oceans. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do? Like, what would be like the cool things that you look forward to doing that oh. either you've done before or you want to do that you haven't done? You're going to think I'm crazy. I, um, I went once a couple of years ago, I went lobster diving uh, off of Dana point and I'm dying to oh, do wow. that again. It's, it's the scariest thing I've ever done. Because <laughs> you, go, you have to go out at night because that's when lobsters are out and you just swim out as far as you can. And then you free dive down and it's, fucking terrifying because we went during a new moon so it was like pitch black out and all you can see underwater is whatever your flashlight sees okay so you're only seeing the ocean like you know four inches at a time <laughs> so you're like i don't i don't know what the fuck is up ahead of me you know right, right. um but it, lobster season is like november through february or something like that so i'm like i gotta and, get and what are you doing go. just scrabbling around underwater <laughs> yeah. hoping to run into a lobster to grab it 
pretty much. Well, you go, there's different areas where they're, they mostly are. Um, when I went, it was the en end of the season and my friends had already fished the area a lot. So there wasn't did you left. find? Did you find one or no? I found, I saw some, but there weren't any that were big enough to take because they have okay. to be, you know, a certain size for you to legally take them. You can't yeah. grab the babies. Um, yeah. And you're not supposed yeah. to grab the mamas. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was, a, uh, I lived on Cape Cod for three summers oh. and um, the, uh, the, uh, the lobster fishermen guys, uh, some uh -huh. of my friends would date them and then they would bring like the lobsters that they couldn't sell so we could eat those Ooh. and it was delicious uh and illegal and uh <laughs> but uh yeah one time my favorite ever sailing thing was at was was on the cape uh because i've been on a couple of whale watches uh -huh. where you go out on the big boat and look for whales and chase yeah. them down but this one thing was a Speaking of lesbians, uh, there was a, a, a lesbian couple that I lived with there, and we went on this sailing thing on, had to be in September of 89, I think. And so it was getting kind of cold, but we all went out. It was, it was hot enough, and then it rained while we were on the sailboat. It was a thunderstorm, and it was Whoa. terrifying, and I loved it. It was the scariest, funnest thing I think I've ever done in my life, except for uh, Brigitte uh, wouldn't stop hitting on me, and uh, <laughs> which was flattering, but uh, I was trying desperately to pretend to be Errol Flynn and get drunk at the same time. So <laughs> I had an like agenda. A lot of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of things going on. <laughs> That's really funny. Did you know lobsters are different on the East Coast and the West Coast? Like the East Coast, they have the front pinchers. And on yeah. the West Coast, they don't. They just have a prickly spine. So you have to no. wear gloves out here when you pick them up because there's, that's what protects them is their, their prickly oh, shell. They're not bitey. They're not snappy. They're, no. poke, they're pokey. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay. So you want to do yeah. that again. That's November yes. to January. Yeah, if anybody out there goes, my friend who I went with moved to New York, so I need a new lobster diving partner. So if Fair anybody enough. wants to hit me up, I'll go with you. I'll just blindly trust you. Right, right. Take yeah. me. It's fine. Well, <laughs> everyone will get tests before we go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What else do you? Uh, what? what uh, I is can't there... wait to. I, you know what? I just would lo love to be in a place where I could spend more time on the water. I just want to be in a boat more often it's my favorite thing in the world i actually recently i like almost bought do you know okay you would know what this is uh my favorite boats are uh antique chris crafts i don't know if you know offhand so chris crafts are like it's like the james bond boat it's like the it has the closed bow and it's the wooden planks and they're really beautiful and shiny you know what i'm talking about yeah right? indiana jones indiana jones of yes. the last crusade yes okay Exactly. So I found like just the hull of one in Florida and I was like frantically messaging the guy. I'm like, please let me buy this. I'm going to send my brother over and then somebody local bought it. But uh, I have to like once a month, I, my friends like will sit me down and be like, you, you cannot buy a boat. You live in a studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can't buy a boat. I can't buy a horse. I would also like to buy a horse. Uh, yeah. So it's not gonna i can't even yeah. have a dog right now so it's very sad um but the um i think yeah those those are the coolest looking speedboats because oh, they're, they're so gorgeous yeah they're glam when, yeah. when 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 they when they all go to splinters in uh in indiana jones and the last crusade i remember being just like why would you break that why would you yeah yeah well you don't need to do that and uh oh, so, it hurts my heart <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah i would like um like i know a couple of comics who in minnesota like andy erickson and chad daniels mm -hmm. oh, they yeah. both they both live uh, around lakes and so they spend all day long every day in the summer oh. on pontoon boats just that you know sounds incredible yeah and then they come in and they're exhausted from the sun and yeah. you're like I, but i want a grill and yeah. then you make bratwurst and hamburgers and that's you have perfect the, that's the yeah. whole life that's it they figured yeah. it out yeah that was yeah. like my life when i was a kid i was just on a boat i mean like i spent my whole life just soaking wet with a life jacket on <laughs> Like, and I would just go into places. Oh my gosh, my little brother, this is a side story, but you'll enjoy Please. it. It has nothing really to do with boats. When we first got the marina, my brother was like two. 
and he fell in the lake and he almost drowned. So after that, my mom was so terrified that he would drown because it's just such a big piece of property. You can't yeah. keep track, you know, they're trying yeah. to run a business. So from then on, for the seven years we owned the place, seven, eight years, <laughs> every morning, uh, my mom would dress my little brother and then immediately put him in a life jacket. Mm -hmm. So he lived like seven, eight years of his life in a life jacket every day. And, it, like all year round and he would there's all these pictures of us like we're out we're at a park and he has a life jacket on we're at a bonfire <laughs> and he has a life jacket on there's no water in sight anywhere no, there's right. not a teaspoon of water <laughs> right he takes his shirt off and he has the weirdest suntan in the world <laughs> yes <laughs> just dedicated to that yeah. have you have you ever seen the original flipper movie no, I haven't no seen one, the movie. No one has. It is <laughs> 1967, 1968. Okay. It's a black and white movie, and it's about a guy uh, off the coast of Maine, I believe. And he has a fisherman, and he has a son. It's him and his wife and his mm -hmm. son. And his and his son ends up meeting Flipper, and, it's, uh, and hijinks ensue. Whatever. But the thing is, is uh, there's a hurricane that comes. Mm -hmm. and trashes the place and there's also uh they, they can't find enough fish so his dad is very stressed out his dad has to go to the back in, into town he has to take you know get on his sunday suit and go away for three days or four days to go and get a um a loan for and so he leaves and he gives his son a list of things who of that he has to fix because of the hurricane right mm -hmm. and uh while he's gone his son, who is, I believe, six years old, uh, six or seven years old, he has to fix the fence. He has to uh, do all. He's got chores coming out of his ears for a six year old. Um, he might be nine. I forget. <laughs> anyway, but uh, he he finds Flipper and he is a child. So uh, it turns out he doesn't do any of the chores. So his dad comes back and it is one of the most brutal scenes um, in a children's movie I've ever seen in my life where his dad is like, are you a baby? I thought you were a, a, a young man. I thought I could trust you to do this, but are, I'm sorry, are you four years old? I can't trust he's you. Like, to... No, I'm five and a half. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm actually, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it is it is actually for a black and white movie it is one of the most beautifully shot oh, like it, okay. I, it will remind you of your childhood even though they are on the ocean because all, right. all this kid all this kid does <laughs> is he's on the he just wants to be on the water he I just love it. yeah and it's uh in the tv show uh -huh. there were two kids in the flipper tv show uh in the movie it's just the it's just the one the one kid anyway uh uh i own i own that movie it's a yeah All it's right. a nice one sure it came as a four pack with gentle ben anyway uh and possibly a lassie uh so <laughs> so what um yeah i mean yeah tell me other boats what do you got i i keep uh, reading off into my stories but that's I, okay I, you're I, totally fine um fuck i i really love all boats i love like you ever see those speed boats that are for wakeboarding where it has like the bar across the top and then you, like, so the rope feeds from the bar. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even fucking wakeboard. And I want one of those. Cause what like, is wakeboarding? So fun. Wakeboarding is like when you're a, a you're on what looks like a boogie board, but your knees are straight. You're on your knees and you're strapped down to it. Oh, well, oh this, I guess you, you could be on your knees or you could like just stand on the wakeboard. Oh, so it's more um, like a snowboarding kind of situation behind kind of, a boat yeah. instead of a skiing that. kind right, of, kind right, of right. thing. Okay, so it's not skiing. Too I can do the the when your legs are stuck together, it feels too restrictive. It's too <laughs> that feels scary to me. You know. Oh, fair enough. I want all kinds of boats. I wish I. You know what else I would love? I would love to. This sounds. I, I, I just told, I, yeah. <laughs> I I would love to build my own canoe. Like I watch on YouTube oh. a lot these canoe building videos when they you know they take the strips of wood and like bend yeah. them on the hull and it's like God I want to fucking make my own canoe. Yeah, like build a bear. Where's that? <laughs> yes. Where's yeah? Build. I've canoe. actually looked for a shop, but there's nothing. There's not even anything in Big Bear. The closest thing is like in Canada. Um, which is disappointing. I've only been to Big Bear once, and it was to go to a weekend for Max Fun. It oh. was like a Max Fun weekend where um, they invite comics 
uh, to come and hang out as a as a perk for their Patreon people. Okay. And they, Maria Bamford went and she was like, would you come and hang out and not, <laughs> and, and I was like, do I get to do a set? Do I, what, what do I, what do I get out of this? And she was like, the food's really good. And I was like, your taste buds were shut off in the Franco-American war. <laughs> uh, so we went and, uh, and it was okay, but big, I would like to go. Andy has some close friends who live up there okay. and he's always, he's always talking about us going up there and, and hanging out. Where you did you go? Where'd you get the COVID test? I haven't um, ever gotten I one. Just went, I just got it at Dodger Stadium. It was my oh, third you, one. Oh, you could go to Dodger Stadium and get a COVID test? Yeah. yeah. How much ones. is it? Oh, okay. Free. It's totally free. You just you just drive through. And they, it's a drive through? You, know, you, you swab yourself. Okay. You drop it in a little thing and go. Yeah. Is it really a mouth simple. swab or a nose swab? Mouth swab, mouth. yeah. I haven't done a nose one. Interesting. Interesting. I hear they're more accurate, but, but oh, well. I do what uh, I can. You do what you can, and uh, I'm not sick. Yeah, so me neither. it's it's just a nice precaution. It's just a nice thing to yeah. do precautionary. My, yeah. I think my mother-in-law's gotten a couple, but she's in her seventies, and yeah. you know she has to go to physical therapy and stuff. So I think she's of had course. a couple. Yeah, you got to go to Big Bear though. We went. Um, there's a lot if you're into hiking. There's a nice hike. It's just it's really nice because it's so sparsely populated that i mean we i was just out and we were hiking and we had masks right but for a lot of it you don't have to wear a mask because you're around no there's no one for you know yeah 100 feet there's not yeah. another person yeah so. when i go for walks around here if i don't see anybody i'm not wearing the mask but it's, exactly. i usually have it on top of my head uh on yeah. my hat on my hat yeah. You know, just sort of like that. And then I just take it just down. Just ready to go. Mm -hmm. Ready to go so that I'm not an asshole and everybody can tell that I'm taking yeah. it seriously. So, um, but yeah. Big Bear yeah. Is good. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice place to get out in, in nature. And it's so much less expensive than here. You know, anything on the ocean is a fucking million dollars to rent a boat or, you know. Andy took a picture for sailing lessons down mm -hmm. there uh, yesterday at the Marina del Rey and also for parasailing. Uh, we could go parasailing. <laughs> like the thing is, I mean, we, it's not, we could, we, we could do it as a treat for ourselves, Maybe, you know, if I got, yeah. a, if I got a decent gig and, uh, uh, and it might be exactly like, uh, jet skis where we're like, well, we did that. Like, cause yeah. I, I don't want to, like, I've seen zip lines and stuff. Have you ever done mm -hmm. that? I haven't. I, I want to, but I haven't been somewhere where it was available. Yeah. I don't. Also, I had time. You know, there's a, some show that was on Netflix with with the guy from High School Musical, mm -hmm. uh, Zac Efron, okay. and uh, he was doing zip lining in some country, and um, I was like, yeah, that doesn't look fun. I don't care. Uh, I don't. I don't like ski lifts or zip lining just because yeah. I don't like heights. Uh, but yeah. um, which, but for some weird reason, parasailing over a body of water doesn't feel like I would die. I would feel no, like I would fall into all. the water and then I would live. Yeah. Because I can swim. It might you, hurt when you slap against the water, but that's still sure. I I force myself sometimes to go off of high dives because Ooh, okay. uh because I I think I don't know. It's again with the Errol Flynn business. Well, I also feel yeah. like I don't it, for me, I feel like I have to keep doing kind of at least semi-dangerous things every year because I'm like, I don't want to get to the point where I'm like, because every year I get more and more scared of things or <laughs> cautious. And right. I'm like, I don't want to just be scared. I want yes. to keep doing adventurous things. You know? Right, right. I, and, I, and I think there's a point where you're like, well, I think I could break my hip, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, if I yeah. am frail... I, there will be a real reason for me not to do this, exactly. but, uh, but until there's a real reason and I don't want to be nuts and do it anyway. Right. Cause right. I, I don't want to have to get a hip replacement, even right. though I understand they're doing great work. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, Chad Daniels had to get a hip replacement. Oof. Uh, I don't, I think he had a boat. That doesn't sound fun. That doesn't no. sound ideal to me. No, but he said that it hurts a lot less. So he's in favor of it. Uh, so they nailed it, I guess. And, uh, so, but the, um, yeah, so I, I agree. I agree. Do, do, do stuff like that zip lining and bungee cord i don't ever want to do that i don't that's, i don't ever want to bungee jump that looks i would go skydiving but bungee jumping fuck you that looks painful it looks like uh why don't i just kill myself 
Yeah, well, what, and, and then the snapping back thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> I absolutely not. <laughs> right, it. right. My brother Phil one time went skydiving, and it was before they were doing tandem jumps. So Oof. this is 30 years ago, probably. Uh -huh. And he said it was one of the stupidest things he's ever done in his so life. So you just give him a coffee filter? Is like a parachute? <laughs> no, he had to stand on the wing of an airplane and no, let go of it. No, 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 Jackie. <laughs> yeah, he said he was standing on the wing thinking, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my yes. life. And then he was shamed, essentially, into letting go and doing it. And he was like, all right, I have done that now, and I never need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious yeah i'm I, I that's another thing i'm like i want to skydive before it gets too scary because every year i'm like do i really want to skydive <laughs> am i sure and i'm like i got it i i need to do it i need to right. just do it right there's and there's yeah there's things like that i just to spend a day say like my favorite thing is to sort of rent to go on one of those we we went to catalina island oh yeah um and went on a day sail you know like somebody had a yeah. sailboat and um and it was a uh, lunch provided by the way uh no bologna sandwiches <laughs> it's fine and uh i was like you should have just told us if to it's included in a pack if food is included in any kind of package it's it's bad it's gonna be bad it's gonna Buy be pretty bad <laughs> yeah but we went on a jungle tour of in australia oh. and lunch was provided and mm -hmm. it was terrible <laughs> Because they're like, where can we cut corners? We can we can yeah. give you lunch for three dollars. Right, Here it this is. is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. It was the whole the whole jungle tour was actually kind of lame, but um, oh. but it was a nice walk in the jungle. Yeah. And and he kept, uh, we we still make fun of the fact that the Australians seem to have named everything a very basic. He's like, this is called the heart shaped plant because <laughs> the leaves look like a heart. And then over here, this is the, uh, this is called uh, the moss. I mean, like literally everything right. was the shape, like, the color. <laughs> yes. We call this the green bird. <laughs> it was yeah. literally... Are there, are there destination? Like, would you ever want to sail around oh. the Mediterranean or? Um, I was, last Christmas, I was, I have a friend that has a sailboat out here and we were supposed to sail from Florida to the Caribbean. Um, wow and ended up not being able to because it was like a storm and so her boat was she was on the east coast sailing down and then she had to leave her boat docked um so we're gonna try again for this year um That's it's cool. only i guess it's like a 12 hour sail or something it's not that bad but i would okay. go i don't know if i'd want to go around like the the far out deep ocean scares the shit out of me uh, like you can't see night, anything yeah yeah when you're when when you're getting into like waves from those oil paintings where they're like 30 feet high i'm like no fuck you i <laughs> oh i want to be in one it. of those i would totally want to be in one of those i'd want to be in one of those if i was in a, an appropriate boat you know like even i rewatched jaws the other day and i know it's like a joke in the, there's a line in the movie when they're like oh you're we're gonna need a bigger boat and i'm like from the beginning <laughs> why were they in a fucking 20 foot boat chasing a 20 foot shark that's right. stupidity Stop it. double the size of the shark you're, t you're chasing yeah <laughs> yes you should at least be in a 40 foot boat give me a fucking break like the boat has to be heavier than the shark cut yourself some slack don't yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but i that's... do kind of like have this fantasy of the end of my life where i just quietly like give away all my stuff and then get on a boat and just kind of like sail out into the ocean and just lose contact with everyone and just die out there <laughs> i have always there's a there's a sail around the world thing Ooh. i met somebody who who was i yeah there's some sort of rich people you can send your kid on a high school year abroad on a on a boat oh wait can we do that as an adult uh, i will <laughs> i will yeah and what you do is is you take all these classes and then you port and you learn the local history. I mean, it's literally, Ooh. it's for gajillionaires. Yeah. And, um, and so um, I think everyone should get to do that. And uh, that is why I uh, <laughs> am against, uh, d d d I'm for some redistribution of wealth. Yeah, anyway, please. so uh, <laughs> just, it doesn't have to be all of it. It'll be fine. Just some yeah. basic, no one should be a 200 billionaire. Anyway. It's so infuriating to me. Yes, oh, I, I didn't. 
would like to murder him with my bare hands. How could he? How could he not be ashamed? Who raised him? I don't know. I don't know. The first time I got residual checks, Jackie, I was like, I'm rich. And I just started Venmoing people money that I knew (laughs) needed money. And I'm like, I I live in a studio apartment, but I was like, I I know some of my friends are struggling right now. And so here you go. Cause this is like, and that's like residuals from one show. That's not a million (laughs) dollars. Right. Right. What show are you? uh, Half a million. Uh, Hey, hey, uh, Jim Jeffrey show. Okay. What was it called? The Jim Jeffrey Show on Comedy Inter- Central. Interesting. Jackie Cation doesn't know anything about anyone's career. Uh, <laughs> you know that fun. probably like 12 years ago, Aisha Tyler was on The Dork Forest, and I said, uh-huh. what have you been doing since you were on Friends? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, because, and I knew that she had been doing a lot of right. things. Uh, I didn't know how many things she had been doing. I had I'd literally not even heard of Archer. So uh, I'm I'm that way with people sometimes too, where I'm like, I a, a friend of mine. I, I don't know if you know because this is dork shit, but Ahmed Best. He was Jar Jar Binks. Okay, we were friends for like a year before I found <laughs> out he was Jar Jar Binks, and then I was like, oh, cool. Okay, that's all right. Cool, dude. You, you know, right. like, whatever. Steady work. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. Didn't even come up. And uh, and. You can't blame him for the character of Jar Jar Binks. Let us just say that out loud, that that guy yeah, was just taking... Leave him alone, guys. He's the he best just, person. <laughs> he was just taking direction. Okay. So, by the way, uh, it has been an hour. I just want, to, want everyone to know that I've been talking to Lisa Curry about boats. Oh, my gosh. So fun. This is some real boat talk, you guys. And uh, Lisa Curry is Lisa underscore Curry on Twitter, at Olympian Lisa Curry on Instagram. And uh, the name of your album, Alive for a While, recorded live before uh before the quarantine and everything in front of audiences in london england united kingdom earth (laughs) uh get it and is it out will it be out in september is it out now yes it's uh it'll be out wednesday september 2nd i'm okay this will not there you go get on it and thank you for being on the show lisa thank you so much for having me and rangers you know the rules out there take care of each other my hat my hat my hat they're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?